What is up guys, Moritz here with another video. One thing that makes Malaysia truly great is that it's a large multicultural uh, society which has a large population of ethnic Malays, Malaysians of Chinese descent, as well as Malaysians of Indian descent. This means that the country is full of rich traditions and cultural norms which might be a bit different from what you're used to back home. So if you want to make sure that you don't offend anyone uh, or raise any eyebrows, I've made a list of things you should not do when living in Malaysia. So without further ado, let's just jump right into it. One thing I would recommend doing when you first move to Malaysia is to learn more about the main religions that are practiced within the country. So I'm not saying you should become a religious scholar or anything, but knowing the basics of Islam, Buddhism, as well as Hinduism can help uh, give you a better understanding uh, of why things are done uh, in a certain way. So the first thing I would recommend doing is not treating everyone the same way. So this might seem counterintuitive if you come from a place like North America or Europe where you're encouraged to treat everyone the same way no matter uh, their gender or religion. However, in Malaysia you need to keep in mind that there is differences in the way with which people interact with one another based off of their uh, religion or ethnic background. For example, when meeting an ethnic Malay uh, of the opposite gender, you should get out of the habit of automatically extending your hand to shake their hand, uh, which you are used to doing back home. This is because an Islam interaction with the opposite gender is a bit more uh, conservative uh, than what you might be used to back in the West. Of course, if they are the ones uh, reaching out to shake your hand, feel free to do so, but, but you should just get out of the habit of extending your hand uh, out. Uh, systematically as it could lead to some awkward situations. So I know this can be a tough habit to break since you've probably been doing it your whole life but hopefully these uh, last year with the COVID measures will make breaking the habit of shaking uh, someone's hand when you first meet them a bit more easy. And in the case of Americans this means no hugging when you meet someone uh, as this is not uh, as culturally acceptable uh, as it is in the United States. Of course if you're shaking hands with a person of the same gender as you then you can just continue doing it the same way you've always been doing it back home. Another thing you should avoid doing when living in Malaysia or any other country with a large Buddhist population is touching people's heads, uh, especially those of children's, because this is considered to be rude. The reason for this is that in Buddhism, the head is the highest part of the body, which makes it the most sacred, whereas the feet are the lowest part of the body, uh, making them uh, dirty. And as a result, there's a, a lot of particularities you got to keep in mind with dealing with your feet, but I'll get into that later in this video. You should also avoid passing things over people's heads for the same reason, although I think this is pretty common practice around most of the world. Another thing you have to do in Malaysia is you always have to make sure that there is plenty of food uh, available when you invite someone over. I'm mainly saying this for my Northern European uh, viewers because in Northern Europe it's quite common to have a uh, smaller selection of food uh, when you have someone over for uh, a gathering. Uh, but in Malaysia, uh, as you will see if you're ever invited by a Malaysian over to their house, uh, they always provide a plenty of food options for you and uh, usually have a great selection of a whole variety of food. Also, when uh, hosting people at your own place, you always got to make sure you keep in their dietary restrictions when making your meal selection. So that goes on with my earlier point of knowing a bit about the religion. So for your Muslim guests, you do not, you know, provide any food containing any pork uh, or alcohol. And for your Hindu guests, you wouldn't provide any food uh, which contains beef. So when you arrive in Malaysia, you'll notice that quite a few people are eating their food with their hands rather than using a fork or spoon. So feel free to eat with your hands as well, but when you do, you gotta make sure that you never touch any of the food with your left hand. So this is for both the food that you put directly into your own mouth or any food that you might be passing to a fellow diner. Uh, the reason for this is that in Malaysia, as well as many other countries around the world, uh, your left hand is used to uh, wash your uh, but after you use the toilet, so it's considered to be unclean, even after you've washed it. In other hand-related etiquette, you should avoid pointing your finger like this, like you probably do back home. Instead, if you want to show someone what object you're referring to, you can point to the object using your thumb in a fist-like shape like this. I don't know the reason for this rule, but if any of you guys do, let me know in the comments, because I'm curious to find out. Another thing you should do in Malaysia is to be extra respectful towards the elderly. So in the West, it's becoming more and more common to not give any favorable treatment to anyone who's elderly. And I would say that actually, it's probably one of the few groups of people you can actually discriminate against uh, without being any uh, major repercussions. However, in Malaysia, as well as most other countries in Asia, they place a much stronger emphasis on respecting the elders. So this means you should avoid doing certain things around them, like smoking around them or crossing your legs in front of them. Don't humiliate people in public. I think this one's pretty universal, but in Malaysia in particular, uh, it's very socially unacceptable to do anything that would humiliate or embarrass someone in public. 
In the same vein, if you are from a country in Western Europe like uh, the Netherlands, uh, Germany, or Switzerland, where it's very common to be quite direct, I think you should tone it down quite a bit because this could be considered as uh, putting people in an embarrassing uh, situation. So if something is happening that you don't like, make sure you don't raise your voice and make a big scene because this is only going to make the situation worse for you. Another thing you should avoid doing when in Malaysia is taking any kind of illegal drugs. So while in many other countries, in uh, especially in North America, the, the drug laws are becoming more lax in some places they're legalizing drugs, this is not the case in Malaysia and you should really avoid any kind of drug use because you could really land yourselves in some serious issues if you are caught with possession of drugs. So Malaysia has some very strict uh, drug laws. For example, if you are caught with 1.5 ounces of marijuana, you can face up to 10 years of imprisonment. And if you're caught with 7 ounces, you will be tried as a trafficker and face the mandatory death penalty. Another thing you should avoid doing in Malaysia is to show public displays of affection like hugging or kissing uh, when you are in public. Some other foot related etiquette include don't uh, wear shoes in someone's home, don't show the bottom of your feet to anyone, and don't move things with your feet in the presence of others. Another thing you should uh, be aware of in Malaysia is you should not uh, get offended uh, or surprised if someone asks you quite personal questions. So in Malaysia, it's quite common for people to ask quite personal questions when they first meet you. Things like, uh, how much money do you earn? Or very detailed questions about your uh, family, which might not be the case back home. So don't take any offense to this. This is just a Malaysian's way of showing that they are interested uh, in you and your life. Another thing you should be aware of in Malaysia is to not just ask anyone uh, for help uh, randomly. Uh, it's not because Malaysians won't help you, but it's actually because they will help you uh, a lot. Uh, for example, if you ask someone for directions, instead of just saying, oh yeah, take a left here or take a right there, it's very common for them to, do, to stop what they're doing and actually take you to the location you're going to in order to make sure that you get to where you need to go. And I found several times just riding on the MRT uh, or walking around the city, um, I just asked someone a simple question like, oh, should I get out here or uh, which way is this, uh, this place? And uh, the person spends you know, 10 minutes of their time or more, uh, taking you to a different location and stopping everything that they're doing. So uh, this sometimes makes me feel a bit self-conscious because I don't want someone to be late for work uh, just because I asked a silly question like, uh, should I get out of this metro stop or how do I get to the train station? So these are just a few of the things you should avoid doing when living in Malaysia. There's a whole bunch of other things I could have included, but I tried to stick to the main situations I think most expats will try to find themselves in. So if you enjoyed this video, uh, why not like and subscribe to this channel uh, or check out one of these two videos that I made about living in Malaysia. I hope to see you in the next video.